Allah tells him, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Allah tells the Messenger والسلام, and by the way, have you heard about the story of who? Musa alayhi Did the, the news of Musa come to you? Meaning now Allah will tell our Messenger وسلم, you need to take inspiration from what happened with Musa alayhi salam. Now, let me, you guys know the story, but I wanted to highlight one or two things from it. When Musa alayhi salam went up to the mountain, and Allah azza wa gave him his mission, you know, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى Go to Fir'aun. Now when you want to go to Fir'aun and talk to him, he is the most powerful political ruler of his time. Many people don't know, he actually was so powerful and so influential that other kingdoms in the world, they used to send their princes and their royal family to get an education in Egypt. Because he was also considered the elite university of his time. Musa salam is supposed to go back into Egypt where he's wanted for what? He's wanted for murder. He's supposed to make it all the way through Egypt and walk, into the, walk all the way up to the most secure building in the entire land of Egypt. And he's supposed to talk to the security guards who are looking to kill him. The chiefs are making a scheme to kill you. They're not interested in arresting him. They are interested in what? Killing him. And he's supposed to walk up to the most secure building in all of Egypt and arguably the most heavily guarded building in the entire world at the time. He's supposed to walk up to it and say, I need to speak with Fir'aun because Allah has given me a responsibility, I need to go talk to him. And he's supposed to expect that the doors will open wide and they'll say, please sir, would you like some orange juice too? And you know, walk him right in and give him a special VIP meeting with the king. And he's going to stand face to face and then when he sees him, he's going to insult him and tell him, you're not Rabb, I, have the real, I come from the, real, the, real, the true Rabb. You know, what you say is a lie. And he's supposed to insult him to his face. That's what he's supposed to do. This sounds like an easy mission or a difficult mission? <laughs> this is what you call mission impossible. Okay, this is the real mission impossible. Now when you are given an impossible mission, when you are given a very difficult task, you should ask for resources. If Musa alayhi salam is going to be, ha- he has the job of talking to the king, maybe he should ask for a helicopter. So he could be dropped right on top. Maybe he should ask for an army, so he can defeat Fir'aun's army and then don't talk to Fir'aun. Maybe he should ask for a lot of money, a lot of me- resources, maybe a disguise, something. What is he, because he's supposed to ask Allah for help. Because he's given the most difficult mission ever given until that time. What does he ask Allah? قَالَ رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي He says, my Rabb, make my chest, expand my chest for me. What's the first thing he asked? He didn't ask for money, he didn't ask for power, he didn't ask for media resources, he didn't ask for political position. You know the Muslims say today, man, if we had power, our situation would be different. If we had the money, our situation would be different. If we owned the news outlets, our situation would be different. Let me tell you something. The Prophets know what to ask. <laughs> they know what to ask. And they had to deal with media, they had to deal with political corruption, they had to deal with military might. And what's the first thing they ask for? Rabbi Shahli Sadri. Expand my chest. Now what in the world does that mean? You know what that means? When somebody has inshirah al sadr, when their chest is open, you know what that means? They're not bothered. They're calm. They're at peace. They're not depressed. They're not sad. They're not worried. They're not nervous. They're not afraid. They're not negative. They're not pessimistic. They're not hopeless. As a matter of fact, someone who has in shirah al-sadr, when their chest is opened up, then when you go meet with them, you become calm too. You become positive too, you become happy too. The mission that Allah has given him is so hard, he should be complaining about that every day. Man, our mission is so hard, subhanAllah, every day I try and things get over more difficult. They get even harder. Like Muslims do today. SubhanAllah, every day there's a new fitna. There's something new happening in the news. First there was this, then there was that, then there was that, there was the shootings in Paris, then there was the shootings in Texas, and there was this in the news and that, and then oh my God, things are getting so bad. And we're constantly negative. And we, don't, we forget that the first thing to ask Allah is what? Rabbi shrah li sadri. Come, open up my chest. We have to understand that the mission Allah gave us, He knows which mission is possible, and which mission is what? Impossible. And this is a matter of iman. When we, we believe, Allah, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْ 
ghaib. We believe in the unseen. When we see the reality of the money and the propaganda and the media and the corruption and the continued spilled blood and all of it, we start thinking there's no way to win. But you know what? That's when you're tested. Because then you have to believe in what? The unseen. That's when you have to believe the unseen. And where does belief in the unseen rest? In the chest. When you see the reality, you get depressed. And your heart becomes tight. That's why he said in a different surah, وَيَضِيقُ sadri. My chest becomes tight. Here he asks, رَبِّ شْرَحْتِ sadri. Open up my chest. Make me positive. I have to believe that the help of Allah will come. I have to believe. I, it's a matter of my iman. I have to believe that all the media in the world will be crushed. All of it will be crushed by the help of Allah. I have to believe that. My chest has, and I have to be calm about it. I have to be very relaxed and I don't think that I'm crazy. This is actually very logical because when the help of Allah comes, nothing can stop it. In يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah were to aid you, there's no possibility of anybody overcoming you. Anybody overcoming you. And the first condition of that is the believer has to believe that the help of Allah will come. The believer has to be positive. You know, I'll give you a scenario. I'll, make, I'll, I'll show you a movie scene. Not a real movie, relax. Okay, astaghfirullah, I'm leaving. No, relax. I'll make up a movie for you. So on the one hand, there's an army. Very powerful. Millions of soldiers. And on the other hand, there's one guy. And this whole army approaches this... How many guys? One, he doesn't even have a weapon. He doesn't even have a weapon. And he's smiling. And he comes to the general of the army and he says... If you know what's good for you, you will turn around and run away. And the entire army is laughing like, <laughs> this guy. We could crush him with one horse. What's he talking about? Except they don't know that he controls airstrikes. <coughs> and they're watching him from satellite. And they can drop bombs on the entire army right there. Laser precise. They have no idea. Why is this guy not nervous? He doesn't have to have an army behind him because he has an army where? Above. You can't even see it. Well, you know what? We don't have, we don't have to have an army behind us. Where's our army? Nobody knows the armies of Allah except Him. When you stand by the word of Allah, then the forces of Allah are behind you. وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا why would you think you're alone? That's a matter of iman. That's a matter, that's the kind of belief we're supposed to have. That's how positive we're supposed to be. That we can battle anything. We can withstand any pressure, any propaganda, any media. There's nothing. All of that is nothing to Allah. 